60 down through uh, these works here. Now, and over here, this is this is one of the more important uh, uh, paintings in our collection from an historic point of view. I think one of the things that I should uh, explain to you is that the, the bulk of our work is work that artists find Bermuda as the muse, as a source of inspiration, whether it's for its architecture or whether it's for its colors or whether it's for its people, uh, whether it's for a landscape, a seascape. And people, uh, unfortunately, make the mistake all too often that because we're Bermuda on a tiny 21 square mile island, that all our work is going to be about seascapes, and it couldn't be further from the truth. Mm -hmm. And as we go through here, you, you'll see uh, that that statement is correct. And I add to that, you know, when you add uh, works by Henry Moore and Albert Glez, and recently, by the way, I'm not sure where you're from, but um, if you've heard of a Canadian photographer, Karsh, most people have. Oh, yes. Uh, he, we recently were given a gift, uh, uh, a portrait by, of, by Karsh of Georgia O'Keeffe. How wonderful is that? Two famous people all in one for our collection. I mean, mm -hmm. and it's an outright donation from a Mrs. Karsh. So the, the, the journey uh, uh, continues today. But this uh, work here by uh, coming back, uh, and you can see, by the way, I, I, I can go right off track and get back in very easily because uh, I love what I do. Yes. This, this work by, uh, by Thomas Driver was done in 1821 uh, and is the earliest known surviving uh, oil of that uh, period. And what it demonstrates is, number one, from a social point of view, that uh, long before emancipation, we have a, a lady out here who's known as a free black, selling uh, wave wares, probably vegetables uh, and fruit to uh, passers-by. Also of note is that many uh, writers uh, from overseas say that Bermuda did not uh, color its walls until the uh, turn of the last century. And this clearly uh, refutes that. Uh, obviously, we were painting our walls maybe as early as the late uh, 1700s. So um, this is a view of St. George's with what we believe are the Inniskillen uh, guards in there as, as well. Mm. So as, as driver came out here as a, as a surveyor and, a, and an, uh, an auctioneer. It is on this corner that Winslow Homer stood in, uh, in 1900 and painted Salt Kettle. The work is in the National Gallery in, uh, uh, in, um, in Washington. Mm -hmm. But we often get artists saying, where uh, is this uh, site? And we can take them there, they say, it's a guest house today. And we have four works uh, done by various people of that particular subject matter. So um, it, it's, it's that that leads us into this. Uh, Homer was uh, really Bermuda's first marketer from a, you know, without any cost. I mean, he influenced so many people to come here because artists realized that it was a day and a half uh, away from New York. Mm -hmm. And I haven't even explained uh, that part to you, is that we started out with uh, uh, Homer and O'Keeffe as, uh, as our sources of inspiration. We knew that they had come here, but we knew uh, nothing else about any of the artists and what was revealed the moment we said, let's have a Masterworks uh, 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 idea. Paintings were falling out of the sky. I couldn't keep up with the amount of work. And what we now know is hundreds of artists came, leaving behind a legacy of thousands of artworks. And they've been retrieved uh, from many corners of the world. I won't say all corners, but certainly many corners of the world. Mm. And that's what's kind of important. Um, and we also believed, by the way, one of our, our overriding philosophies was to make our collection as accessible as possible. So uh, as a result, three years later, when we had a tiny little room that wasn't much bigger than this square here, we were exhibiting uh, what we had at, to that point. And the a, a representative from the O'Hara Trust gave us uh, seven of 10 uh, watercolors by Elliot O'Hara done in, in 1931. That was an outright gift. At that point, that, you know, that was our biggest uh, single gift. So good things were happening to us very, very early on. It's not exciting. Yeah, really good things. People were very plugged in. They knew who Ogden Pleisner was. Uh, and this was our second uh, Ogden Pleisner, another view uh, of St. George's. Um, recently, a, a nice work by Wilhelm Foote has come up for uh, sale. Uh, whether we are going to be successful or not remains to be seen. Beautiful, the construction is right. Everything about it is, is just so well balanced. And the other thing that, uh, of note in, in here, these uh, ferrymen were uh, a common sight. And we see lots of those in photographs, but it's the first time and the only painting that I've seen of, a, of an oarsman uh, waiting to take a passenger from one side of the Hamilton to the other. Mm -hmm. 
beautiful, the construction is right, everything about it is, is just so well balanced. And the other thing that, uh, of note in, in here, these uh, ferrymen were uh, a common sight. And we see lots of those in photographs, but it's the first time and the only painting that I've seen of, a, of an oarsman uh, waiting to take a passenger from one side of the Hamilton to the other. Mm -hmm. What separates uh, our collection from any other, what I would call regional uh, collection, is the fact that it has such an international uh, appeal. And it was never me meant to be, to, be, to be designed to be parochial, it was meant to be international. And we've been so lucky to have added uh, Cubist work uh, into our, our collecting. Because Cubism was physically done uh, in Paris, New York, and Little Bermuda. This little fleck of sand flung out in the middle <laughs> of the Atlantic, that it has a Cubist work is what separates it from any other collection uh, of its kind. And I say that with a, a lot of confidence, uh, and in fact increasingly more confidence, because as I take people through tours, no one seems to challenge it, and I've been down to the other islands south, and they don't have anything uh, comparable. They have re what, well, what I would call their regional artists, but they don't have the, the O'Keeffe's and the Homer's and the Albert Glass and the Henry Moore, uh, and such you know, great names as, mm -hmm. as what we have uh, today. Mm. Here is the first work, and this is Paul, what, what, why I had to change my day job. You may want this one for this, because this was one of the first 12 paintings that we brought back to Bermuda in the summer of 1987. It is painted by Ogden uh, Pleiser of Shinbone Alley, and it is on the same uh, road where Andrew Wyeth painted Royal Palms. Mind you, Andrew Wyeth was looking the other way. Having said that, um, I, when we were, we were a maverick group and we were nomadic and we were showing this work up at the Bermuda Society, our first 12 works up at the Bermuda Society, and just by sheer coincidence, one afternoon uh, I was on duty and a boy uh, approached me and said, you know, sir, I live in that house. And I was just so moved by that because what went off was that sense of participation, that sense of association, that sense of belonging, the sense of identity, the sense of culture and pride and history, all of that went off. And so I went home and realized that I was gonna to have to change my day job if I was truly gonna make that work. But that was pivotal in my thinking, that we had instantly made a connection with a Bermudian. No, he had no dialogue in front of him, and there was no, nothing to read because we were too young. We were just simply showing pictures. And so that was a response. And that's why, and you see here, we ask people to respond to the, the show, and we get some very favorable responses that we uh, can then uh, you know, later uh, use and, and uh, uh, illustrate the, the power of our co collection. And um, it is one of about 10 works done by him of that size, and they're all completed. Um, this one, as you can see, is a very finished work. There are some that are you know, sketches, um, there is a large oil of that uh, subject matter uh, in a private uh, collection. But what's significant about this is that this work was done at the Hamilton Hotel. Remember the panoramas I showed you? Mm -hmm. The Hamilton Hotel burned down. So he is in the Hamilton Hotel looking north and he sees the turrets of Government House and he likes the subject matter. When we were at the uh, City Hall, before this, the, the site became the National Gallery, it was just this empty room. We were exhibiting it, and I had the, uh, another glaze uh, uh, sketch in my hand, and I went out on the porch, and as I looked north, the turrets uh, uh, lined up. And believe me, my knees started to, to knock when I realized that I was standing within feet of where this Cubist work was originally done. I mean, it was an incredible revelation to have something like that happen. That, uh, that we would had returned uh, something of this stature to uh, our island, uh, done some 80 years uh, uh, prior. So we've had lots of wonderful uh, coincidences, uh, uh, and, and someone up there is just simply smiling on us, the way this thing has, uh, has evolved. See the influence of Cubism, um, or, or Albert Glez, uh, in these uh, works. I should point out, because so, some people think that this is, uh, some of the pigments have um, deteriorated. That is not the case. This is in pristine order, and you can see by the lines, he's gone all the way out on the page, and then he's just uh, done a little uh, dappling and uh, mottling, because that's how Bermuda's pigments then would have uh, appeared. Because we used to color our walls with organic uh, lime and pigment, 
and it, one would fade and then uh, another color would get added on. But that's the texture that one would, would see over time. This is a, a work, a beautiful little piece uh, by Canadian artist um, uh, Nora Collier that showed up at auction about uh, two years ago. So we were most fortunate to be able to have found it and return it. We have, by the way, three uh, boards um, that work for us. One is in Toronto, uh, one is in New York, and obviously there's one here locally. And those three boards, uh, A, help us raise money, and B, help us identify work as and when it appears. Because it's very mm -hmm. difficult for us living here to always find work, mm -hmm. and you know, to be at auctions and things like that. We just can't be, mm -hmm. be everywhere. Figure out where it was. That's how much the landscape in some places of Bermuda has changed. So what we did was we put um, a picture of this in the local paper, or Friday paper, it's no longer in print. And we said, can you help us identify it? And what happened was the phone was ringing off the hook and these people who were being interviewed here all lived in this place called Parker's Hill. And so it's their, their memories about living uh, there in these houses up under the mm -hmm. hill, which are now bulldozed. And it's this guy over here, his name was Carlton Wilkinson, and he led the charge of getting other people to, uh, to come. And many of these people remember Dorothy painting that. What's changed here is that this building has been torn down. Th these have all been made way for printing houses and warehouses and uh, parking, yeah, lots. and parking lots. And Bermuda's roads are mostly, if not 99%, covered with tarmac now. In Dorothy's day, they were still limestone. Uh, before the, uh, the advent of the automobile. Mm -hmm. With the advent of the automobile in 45, the, 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 the quality of light changes because you know, at, uh, asphalt absorbs light, whereas um, uh, Carl Road would reflect light. So there's a, a, a major difference. But this, and then so the next week, by the way, we got the group to come together and we took a group photo and put it ba that back in the paper of everybody who remembered uh, Parker's Hill. So we got two bites of the, uh, the cherry. That's a great story. It's a beautiful, beautiful story here. We'll underwrite the, uh, the cost of the, of the collection. 25 years... And his name again was? Sir, Sir David Gibbons. Yes, of course. 25 years later, Sir David and his company, it's called Colonial Insurance, is underwriting $25 million, and we pay a dollar a year. That is phenomenal support. And so whenever we're asked by some overseas companies that do business here, do the locals support you? We, we trot that one out all the time because that is our biggest uh, legacy and it is, you know, it is, it is very truthful. That is huge, huge help. Uh, without that sort of help, we, we, we just couldn't exist, you know, we wouldn't exist. Hey, Carol, how are you?